We present Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband, a new series based on the delightful stories of Isabel Scott Rorick's gay, sophisticated Mr. and Mrs. Cougat, two people who live together and like it, starring Miss Ball with Richard Denning. As we look in on the Cougats this morning, something new has been added. There's a moving van in front of the house next door. But, of course, the new neighbors don't interest Liz Cougat in the least. Liz? Yes, George? You've been standing at that window for an hour. Oh, I have not. Yes, you have. You ought to be ashamed. Now, come away from there. They might see you. No, they won't, George. They're too far away. Well, then how can you see anything? I'm using your binoculars. (laughs) Oh, Liz. Put those things down. But I can see so much with them. (gasps) Oh, my goodness. That must be the lady who's going to live next door. Oh, what a spook. (laughs) She's got big eyes on the side of her head and six legs. What? (laughs) Oh, my mistake. I was looking at a fly on the windowsill. (laughs) Oh, they're taking in a barrel now, and it's full of their very best china. Now, how can you tell that? Because the moving men dropped it off the truck and bounced it along the sidewalk. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, there's the lady who's moving in. She's standing by the curb with one foot on her chest. I beg your pardon? She has one foot on her chest. It's a Chinese chest. What nationality is the rest of her? Oh, don't be silly. Now, leave me alone. Oh, Liz, please, don't be so nosy. Well, there goes their living room couch. Hmm, it's not so hot. It's just plain spying You don't catch me doing anything like that Oh, there goes a lot of fishing equipment Hand me those glasses <laughs> ah, I knew that would get you, here Ah, there goes a shotgun And a big leather chair, probably mm-hmm. for the den You know, George, now that I see you doing it, it does look awful I'm not going to spy on them anymore mm, Must have money, too it was a beautiful mink coat. Hand me those glasses. <laughs> hmm. That's the kind of mink that lays eggs at Easter. <laughs> now, Liz, we've got to stop peeking at them from behind curtains. You're right, George. I'll go over and peek at them in person. No. <laughs> oh, honey, I know you like to be neighborly, but sometimes you carry it too far. I do not. When the Crawfords lived there, they didn't complain that I was running over all the time, did they? No, they took the easy way out. They moved. Oh, George. (laughs) Oh, look, there's Corey. I wonder what he's doing here so early. Maybe he's just getting home. He's probably been up all night dancing as usual. Oh, hello, Corey. Hi, George. Hello, Corey. What are you doing up so early? I came over to talk to George. What time is it? Eight o'clock. No. Yes, eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, is there an 8 o'clock in the morning, too? (laughs) He's in much worse shape than I thought. What's in your mind, Corey? Well, I came over to congratulate you, George. You're about to become a mother. A mother? What am I going to do, become a father? (laughs) This is a great break for you, George. Starting tomorrow, you're going to be responsible for 130 children. Over my dead body. (laughs) Well, it's this way, Liz. My mother's club is setting up a trust fund for an orphan's home they run. And I've suggested George for the trustee. Means a big account for your bank, George. Oh, that's swell of you, Corey. You just have to be passed on by Mr. Brennan, the head of the home, but that'll be no problem. Well, you better run along to the bank. Kiss me goodbye, Mother. (laughs) By the time you get home, I'll know all about the people next door. Liz, I want you to promise me you won't go over there today. Now, we'll get to know them soon enough. Well, all right, I promise. You never can have any fun around here. Goodbye, Liz. Goodbye, Corey. Goodbye, Shorty. What do you mean, Shorty? Oh, I was looking at you through the wrong end of the binoculars. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, Shorty. Mrs. Cougat, aren't you afraid the new neighbors may get suspicious and realize we're looking at them? Oh, why should they? We're just doing our cleaning. Yeah, but we've been washing these same two windows all afternoon. (laughs) Katie, you're right. We'll stop this minute. 
We're being completely unladylike and unneighborly. And besides, the moving van just left. <laughs> oh, my, they carried in a lot of junk, didn't they? I've been watching them move furniture for nigh under 30 years, and I've never seen such choice, ripe junk. <laughs> With women who know junk best, it's Mrs. Cougat, two to one. <laughs> oh, I'd love to find out what she's like, Katie. Oh, so would I. Of course, I promised George I wouldn't. But you know, she might be lonely. Do you think so? Yes. She'll get to brooding and wonder why her neighbors haven't come to see her. She'll feel she isn't welcome and become moody and depressed and despondent. Finally, she'll shut all the windows and... Turn on the gas. Goodbye, Katie. Well, where are you going? Next door. If I hurry, I may be able to save her life. <laughs> this is Cougat. I think it was real sweet of you to drop over like this. Well, I, I thought it was the neighborly thing to do. I do, too. Usually, when you move into a new neighborhood, the people don't come over at all. They just stand behind their curtains and spy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Why, the old snoops. <laughs> Mrs. Cougat, after we get settled, maybe you'd be good enough to find me some help. You certainly have two wonderful maids. Two? Yes, and are they thorough? They spent the whole day cleaning the same two windows. <laughs> well, we have just one maid, Katie. I'm letting the other one go. The red-haired one with the nice figure. <laughs> oh? Well, then maybe I could get her to work for me. Uh, no. No, you wouldn't like her. She's too inquisitive. Got her big nose and everything. That's why I'm firing her. I can't stand that in a person. Neither can I. Oh, dear, the movers left that Chinese chest in the living room. I wanted it in the main hall. I wondered where you were going to use that. What? I mean, it's wonderful. Don't ever lose that. <laughs> well, I'll run along. If there's anything I can do for you, now you let me know. Well, there is one little favor, if it wouldn't be imposing. Of course not. What is it? Could you take care of my little Stevie for this afternoon? Why, of course. I adore children. I'll take him to a movie. I don't think you'd be very popular. He's only four months old. Four months? Oh, well, then I guess a movie is out of the question. <laughs> he couldn't chew the popcorn. <laughs> well, it won't be for long. I just have to get one carload of things from my old house. I'll leave the key in case you need anything. Oh, you know how to feed a baby, don't you? Now, don't you worry. If you're late getting home, he can eat with us. I'll just tell Katie to throw on another pork chop. <laughs> All right, Stevie, now you sit right here until Liz decides what to do with you. I, I can't. Well, sit up. Why do you keep falling over all the time? All right, I'll hold you. There. <laughs> I'm pretty good with babies. How would you like to have me for a mother, huh? <laughs> You don't have to get nasty about it. Oh, Mrs. Cougat. What is it, Katie? Uh, Mr. Cougat just pulled into the driveway. He's home early. Oh, darn it. I thought I'd have the baby back by the time he came home. Here, take him in the other room. All right. Come on, baby. Hi, Liz. I'm home early. No. Yeah. That uh, fellow from Cory's Orphanage couldn't make it this afternoon. He was moving or something. That's good. Let's go for a walk, dear. No, I'd, I'd rather just relax. Well, what happened around here today, Liz? What's new? Oh, nothing. What's new with you? <laughs> nothing. Liz, what's that crying? What crying? That crying. What's new with you? Liz, I distinctly heard a baby crying. <laughs> no, George. I, I did that. Oh, now, wait a minute. What do you take me for? For better or for worse, George. <laughs> I don't mean that. Liz, there's a baby in that den. 
I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It is a baby. Give that man a box of diapers. <laughs> Whose baby is this? You, uh, you wouldn't believe it's mine, would you? No. Princess Elizabeth's? No! <laughs> well, I guess that is pretty wild. What kind of a dope do you think I am anyway? Now, now, I want to know where this child came from, and I want the truth. All right, George. I'm waiting. I'm thinking. <laughs> Oh, what's the use? Might as well tell you. I went over to call on the new neighbors. Liz, you didn't. All right, I didn't. Now I don't know where I got the baby. <laughs> so you got yourself involved already. Well, if you hadn't come home so soon, you never would have known. Besides, it's only for a little while. His mother will pick him up any minute now. I'll get it. Here, talk to the baby for a minute. I'll be right back. Uh, talk to the baby, huh? Uh, hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, uh, what what would you like to talk about? <laughs> oh, now, now, now stop crying. If you stop crying, I'll make a funny face for you. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, how's this one? Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Cry again. Uh, let's see. Uh, how would you like to listen to my wife? Uh, 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 let, let go of it. Uh, well, well, hold it carefully. No, don't swing it. You might hit it on the table. <laughs> Put up your do. Uh, that was the baby's mother on the phone, George. Oh, well, I'd be glad to get rid of this kid. Is she coming right over? Uh, no, she isn't. Her husband is out of town and. Her car broke down, and she'll have to stay at their other house until tomorrow. Oh, you mean we have to keep this little monster all night? Oh, George, it's wonderful of you to suggest that. The battle between Liz and George and the baby will continue in just a moment in Act Two of My Favorite Husband. It has been said that the military arm of America is the greatest force for peace in the world today. But it is not merely a preventive force. Hardly an hour passes in any given day in which our servicemen at home and abroad are not performing some deed that illustrates the desire of Americans to lend a helping hand wherever possible. Unique among these deeds is the one that occurred recently in Vendrail, Spain. High atop the spire of a church in that town, a 300-pound sculpture had stood since 1784. Now it seemed in danger of falling. So precarious was its perch that even the superstructure the townspeople built around it was considered insufficient to remove the statue safely. Word of the dilemma reached the United States 16th Air Force. Engineers designed a special rig and sent a helicopter to raise the heavy stone figure and bring it down for repairs. The story made no headlines, except in the town of Vendrail, Spain. But it should also make a headline in the conscience of all Americans. A headline that might read, We are Americans. As we go, so goes America. <laughs> And now, let's go back to Liz and George Cougat and see how they're getting along with the baby. Where are you, Liz? In the kitchen. Oh, here you are. I got the baby bottles and things from next door. Good. I wrote the baby's formula down on this memo pad. Let's see now. We'll need milk, baking powder, cheese, and lighter fluid. What? Oh, that's my shopping list. Well, find that formula. The baby's upstairs screaming his head off. Oh, here it is. 28 and 2. 28 and 2 what? I can't remember whether it's 28 ounces of milk and two of water or 28 of water and two of milk. But you do remember it was ounces. Yeah. Or was it quarts? <laughs> oh, fine. Now what will we do? Well, let's compromise. We'll make it 15 of each. Yeah, but, but it might not be good for him. Well, she talks so fast. She did say something about cereal. Yeah, that sounds better. I've heard of babies eating cereal. Now, which kind do you think he'll like best? Corn flakes or post toasties? <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Grape nuts. Ah, oh, that's a little rough, isn't it? Uh, maybe it should be cooked. 
Oh, don't be silly. You can't cook grape nuts. Here's some cream of wheat. Oh, wait a minute. Don't bother. Here's a bottle of stuff that's just made for babies. We'll give them a drink of this. What is it? Baby oil. Baby oil? <laughs> oh, 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 they don't drink baby oil. They don't? Of course not. Oh, oh, oh. That's to fry the cereal in. <laughs> Well, how'd you expect me to know? Hey, there's some canned baby food in that stuff I brought over. Oh, good. We can't go wrong with that. It's made for babies. Here, open a can of carrots. Oh, it's spoiled. I'll have to throw it out. Oh, what's the matter with it? Oh, it's all mushy and squishy. <laughs> Give me another can. Yeah, well, here's a can of beets. That ought to be good. How do you like that? This one's spoiled, too, just like the other one. Gee, it's a lucky thing you noticed it. The kid sure would have been sick. Well, we'll just stick to the formula. Milk never hurt anyone. Okay. Oh, but we'll have to have a nipple for this bottle. Did you bring any? I didn't see any. Well, how are we going to... Get me the scissors, George, and hand me that pair of rubber gloves. I'll cut the fingers off. <laughs> Miss Cougat, that baby is crying something off. I know it, Katie. We're having a terrible time trying to fix his food for him. Why didn't you call me? I know what to do. Oh, Katie, you're a lifesaver. Saver. But I'll fix it and give him this feeding. This feeding? You mean there'll be more? She means breakfast, George. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. But a baby this age is too young to be up at night. <laughs> You'll find out. He'll probably eat every four hours all night long. Oh, Katie, you're kidding. I'll bet he sleeps all night. <laughs> Liz, isn't that baby asleep yet? Almost midnight. I can't understand it. I fed him and walked the floor with him, rocked him, and he's still awake. Well, why don't you try changing? I did that, too. <laughs> My thumb has more holes in it than a pin cushion. Here, you take him for a while, George. Oh, no, no. Now, this is your party. But, George, I'm so tired. Hey. Hey, wait a minute. He's asleep. No. Yes, sound asleep. I'll just put him down. Oh, there. Oh, darn it. I know how to put him to sleep. rock a bye baby. Oh, George, would you? Sure. Wait here, I'll go get a nice big rock. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I was only kidding. Here, I'll take him for a little while. Now, he won't hurt you, Stevie. George, tell him one of your after-dinner stories. They'd put anyone to sleep. That's right. Insult me. Well, say something to him. He won't understand what you say. He just, just likes to watch your Adam's apple bob up and down. All right. Stevie, did you ever hear the story about the traveling salesman? Well, he knocked on the farmhouse door. George! <laughs> well, you said he wouldn't understand. <laughs> well, now I'm not so sure. <laughs> I'll just walk him for a while, George, and I'll take over again. <laughs> oh, come on, Liz. It's your turn. I've been packing this soggy little bundle for two hours. <laughs> I didn't sleep a wink. Give him... Oh, George, I'm stupid. You just finding that out? <laughs> No wonder the poor little fellow couldn't sleep. I forgot to burp him. Burp him? Certainly. Come here, little fellow. Now, over my shoulder. There we go. A couple pats on the back ought to do it. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Oh, when he does it, it's cute. When I do it, it's vulgar. <laughs> oh, look. His little eyes are closing. Well, never mind his little eyes. How about his big mouth? <laughs> oh, he's asleep already. Oh, well, we finally did it, George. What time is it? Almost four o'clock. Well, since he took so long getting to sleep, maybe he won't even remember his four o'clock feeding. <laughs> oh, 
that's not a baby. It's a time bomb. Well, it's not his fault. He's hungry. Well, if he's so hungry, let him get up and make himself a sandwich. He knows where the icebox is. All right, I'm coming. Come in. Oh, good morning, Mr. Atterbury. Who got your late boy? I'm sorry, Mr. Atterbury. Have a party last night, boy? No, no, sir. No, Liz and I, Liz and I were up all night with a baby. Yeah, those little... A baby? George, congratulations, boy. Oh, but Mr. Atterbury... Oh, why didn't you tell me? Is it a boy or a girl, boy? It's a boy, boy. Uh... <laughs> oh, but it isn't ours. We're just keeping it for the people next door. Oh. Hey, George, that Mr. Brennan was here this morning about the orphan's home trusteeship. I don't think you're going to get it. Because I was late? No, no, no. He wants a family man for the job. He thinks he'll understand the problems better. However, I persuaded him to go out and see for himself what a lovely home life you have. I didn't tell him you have no children. He's on his way to your house now. Well, I, I better go out and meet him. Now, wait a minute. I have an idea, boy. Boy, what an idea. <laughs> Is that baby still at your house? Uh, Mr. Atterbury, I know what you're thinking. And I just couldn't do it. Nonsense. He'll only come to your house once. You tell him the baby's yours, that's the end of it. No. Yes. I'll bust you to eighth, Vice President. <laughs> you wouldn't. And I'll take your notary public stamp away. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. I'll run along, boy. In the meantime, I'll call, call Liz and put her wide. Good morning. Is Mr. Cougar in? I'm Mr. Brennan from the Orphan's Home. Oh, uh, no, Mr. Cougar's not home, Mr. Brennan, but won't you come in? Oh, thank you. You know, it's fantastic that you should live in this house. My wife and I just... Oh, here comes George now. My, how he's rushing. Oh, I thought I'd never make it. Uh, Mr. Brennan? Cougar, how do you do? Uh, won't you come in? Uh, did Mr. Atterbury call you, dear? No. Why should Mr. Atterbury call me dear? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> No. Oh, uh, yeah, sit down, Mr. Brennan. How's the baby, darling? Oh, do you have a baby? Huh? No. Yes. Oh, uh, you mean the one we just had last night? You, uh, just had it last night? Yes. It's four months old. <laughs> She's always joking. Great kitty, Liz. Uh, I'll get you a glass of water, Mr. Brennan. Oh, no, no, don't bother. I'd like to see your child. Oh, no, it's no bother. Uh, come along, Liz. Help me get the water. Well, you can carry a glass of water. Come and... on. Yeah, but really, I don't want any water. What's the matter? Have you gone crazy? Listen, Brennan wants a family man for that job, and Atterbury insisted we tell him that baby is ours. Oh, great. Well, let's show it to him. Where is the baby? I gave him back to his mother. Oh, well, we'll run next door and get him. I'll, I'll tell Brennan you have to dress him or something. And hurry up. All right. Take the shortcut through the backyard. Ow! Oh! oh, I forgot that low branch. Oh, oh I thought that puddle dried up. Uh. Yeah? Look, do me a big favor, will you? Lend me Stevie again just for a minute. I don't have time to explain. Why, oh, uh, all right. Wait, he's right here. Say, you didn't see my husband, did you? No, I wouldn't know him. Funny, I thought I saw Mr. Brennan walking up the street before. Brennan? From the orphan's home? Yes. How did you know? Well, I'll tell you later. Goodbye. Uh, look out for that nail on the door. It'll catch your dress. I missed it. i got to watch for that puddle. There. Best it. <laughs> oh! Oh, right in the eye. Oh. Oh, here comes Liz with the baby now. Here he is. Liz, what happened to you? You're sopping wet. The baby. <laughs> And you've got a black eye and a bad bump on your head. Well, he fights when I try to dress him. Well, he must be a strong little rascal. Uh, Let me see him. Uh, George, did you know Mr. Brennan is the man who moved next door yesterday? What? I was going to save it for a surprise. That's a laugh, isn't it? Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> uh, let me see the baby. Who does he look like? 
You'd die if I told you. <laughs> Here he is. Why, this is amazing. This child looks very much like my little boy. Oh, he does? Yes. Now, wait here. I'm going home and get my little Stevie so we can compare the two. And when I hold them up together, you'll think it's impossible. I know it's impossible. <laughs> I'll be right back. Now what? Get that kid back before he gets there. Oh, why didn't I put on my track shoes this morning? Come on, fellow traveler. Watch out for that branch. There. Jump the puddle. There. Here's the baby. Thanks. Seen your husband yet? No. Good. Goodbye. Uh, look out for that nail. Oh! Oh, why doesn't she get that darn nail fixed if she knows it's there? Oh, that awful puddle. Oh! oh! Did you get there in time? Yes. Oh, here he comes now. Where's the baby? Why didn't you bring him? Yeah, why didn't you bring him? <laughs> you know, when I got home and took a good look at him, I could see. They don't look alike at all. Ah! We'll return in just a moment. Why is dead reckoning called dead? Any navigator will explain the term as the calculation of a ship's position without astronomical observations by plotting on a chart the distances covered along each course which has been steered. And if he knows his nautical history, he might add that a little over a hundred years ago, this process was correctly known as deduced reckoning. Old log books had a space for entering deduced position. But the space on the page was small, and navigators took to writing in the abbreviation D-E-D. Mariners read it aloud as dead, and by usage gave us a more colorful, if less accurate, term. In this complex world, where word meanings are constantly changing, it's easy to be misunderstood. That's why it's a good idea to know your word. Liz, I was almost asleep. Where have you been? Next door. I was telling Mr. Brennan how wonderful you are, and he's going to give you that job as trustee. Oh, that's great. Just, uh, just one thing, though. I had to promise to do them a favor. Yeah? What kind of a favor? <coughs> oh, no, not tonight. No, not tonight, George. For the whole weekend. Good night, honey. Oh. <laughs> My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.